Hello and welcome back. Just in case you're curious, molecules can have conformations that are chiral. For example, remember the Gauche conformation of butane. These conformations essentially are enantiomers of each other, but because the molecule exists in these conformations by rotating about a single bond, it exists in many, many different rotations at room temperature, including both of these, and so the the um, a solution of this molecule is going to be a chiral because these rotomers are interchangeable via bond rotation so butane is not a chiral compound and you might also think the same thing about cyclohexane like for example these methyl groups don't stick straight up or straight down <clears throat> The conformations are actually mirror images of each other, but by being able to convert from one to the other or interconvert from one to the other at room temperature via a ring flip, that makes uh, the dimethylcyclohexane a chiral. And it does possess a plane of symmetry essentially because of this interconversion that happens at room temperature. Sometimes we could even have chirality without chiral centers. This molecule here, which is uh, a version of BINAP, actually has this, uh, is actually stuck in this conformation. It doesn't have a chiral center, but because it can't rotate, where these triphenylphosphine groups can't rotate past one another, the different conformations are stuck and are not interchangeable. And these, in fact, can rotate plane polarized light. They are mirror images. The left and right are mirror images of each other, and they're non superimposable mirror images, making this molecule actually chiral. They have an axis of symmetry rather than a chirality center. Now, we're not really going to discuss this type of molecule in this course, but we're just discussing it for completeness in this chapter. Another type of molecule that can have chirality without a chirality center is an alene. So for example, we have this carbon that is double bonded to two other carbons. These molecules are not particularly stable anyway, and we're not going to study them in this class, but they can have a chirality center. So for example, we have this molecule at the bottom. We can see that these two molecules are mirror images of each other, and they're also non-superimposable mirror images. If we flip the right one around on the left, the methyl group will be going back and the hydrogen will be coming out. So they are, they don't have a chiral center, they're non-superimposable mirror images, so they are chiral. So molecules do exist that don't actually have a chiral center that can be chiral, but we won't study those in this class in, in further chapters, just, just a little bit in this chapter. All right, and so um, to resolve enantiomers, we can actually um, get the different enantiomers separated in a couple of different ways. So remember, one way that we separate compounds was by distillation. Well, you can't separate enantiomers by distillation. You may be able to separate uh, diastereomers that way, possibly, but you can't separate enantiomers that way. But and recrystallization generally separates compounds with different solubilities. This method doesn't work for enantiomers because they have identical physical properties in general. But if you, but in, well, for example, you can crystallize a chiral compound by using another chiral compound. So in 1847, Louis Pasteur performed this resolution of enantiomers where he found that the dis different shaped crystals would, <clears throat> would actually crystallize together with each other and he was able to separate the enantiomers of these tartrate salts by actually using tweezers to pick them apart. Now this is a very special case. It doesn't work for most pairs of enantiomers. But in fact, we can use a chiral resolving agent in a similar way to resolve chiral compounds. So by crystallizing a chiral compound with a chiral salt, we get now, instead of having enantiomers, we've created pairs of di diastereomers 
that can be separated, say, with something like column chromatography. So we can have different, use different um, separation techniques with these because we've created diastereomers here instead of enantiomers. Affinity chromatography is another way to separate compounds. So we can use a chiral resolving agent or absorbent in a column and pass the compound through with a uh, with a mobile phase that is achiral and then that enantiomer will come off of the chiral column at different rates and this is usually the way enantiomers are resolved now um, we're not going to really do any of that in this class it's just a little bit of information for you in case you're interested in that topic